Hi, and welcome back to this second video on data classes. So here I'm making four videos that explain data classes in Python, and this is the second one. So if you haven't seen the first one, then you can find a link in the description. In the second video, we're going to talk about two things, one of them being equality between data classes. So you've seen how to create data classes, but now I want to check out how equality between two different instances of a data class is handled. So enough talking, let's head into the code. So now I am inside VS Code and let's talk about equality between data classes. So let's first, as a repetition, just create a data class. So I'll use a data class and this time I want to create a class that represents a book. This is also kind of a standard example for classes. So a book should have a title. This should probably be a string. A book should have an author. This should also probably be a string. It could have, for instance, pages which should be an integer, and it typically has an ISBN number. This could be handled as a string. There are usually hyphens in this, so I put this as a string just for simplicity. There are also different versions of ISBN numbers. I think depending on whether the book was made before 2007, this doesn't really matter for us. Let's just keep it simple. Before we measure equality of instances, I just want to mention that some of these attributes might be optional, like for instance pages, but in case it isn't supplied, I don't really want to set it to zero because that's a really weird default for number of pages in a book. I would probably want to set it to say none. Maybe also I don't really require the ISBN number, so I can also set this to none. I would say that the title and the author should be provided with a book. However, this kind of ruins the type hint because I've said that, yeah, this should be an integer and this should be a string, but I've just set this to none and none is of none type. So that doesn't really work. So the workaround to this is just to go to, into the typing module and import optional. So if you have the optional, then you can just wrap an optional type hint here for the int and also exactly the same thing for the string. So what this tells Python is that, yeah, pages should be int or it could be none. So this is the way I would handle it. In any case, it's time to make some concrete instances. And to do this, I'll just copy some code because I don't want to write all of it manually. And then we can look at it together. So here we have four books. So the first one is a book called Fluent Python. And here you can see the title and the author and the pages and the ISBN number. Then I have two variants. Here is one that is completely identical. So it's a new instance but with precisely the same information. Same title, same author, same pages, and same ISBN number. Then you have third version of the book that has missing pages. So it has a title, it has an author, it has an ISBN number, but it's missing pages. And this should be perfectly fine due to how I defined the pages attribute. Finally, we have a different book. This is called a Python Crash Course book. Here we can find the title, the author, and the ISBN number. So now I want to check for some equality. And let's begin by checking the kind of obvious thing. I really don't want the Fluent Python book and the Python Crash Course book to be evaluated as equal because they're obviously not. So this is the obviously not equal. And here I just want to check that Fluent Python, check if this is equal to the Python Crash Course. And if I run this, then Luckily for us, this is not considered to be equal, so that's great. That's kind of the bare minimum. This would also be for usual classes that if you have two different instances that have widely different data, then they're of course not considered to be the same. We want also to check that hopefully, since both of these, the Fluent Python and the Fluent Python identical, have the same information, then they should represent the same type of data. So let's also do it for this one. Now I just copy this thing here. This is, let's say, instead of obviously, I would hope that this is equal, so hopefully equal. This is the Fluent Python book, and it's also the Fluent Python identical book. So let me run this. And here you can see that, yeah, these are equal, and that's great. Actually, this you don't get for typical classes. If you use a usual class, even though they have the same attributes, they're not automatically set to be equal. I think the default behavior is that they're only equal if they represent the same object in memory. So typically data with exactly the same attributes should be considered to be equal. And then there is the third and the most interesting one. And that's, of course, if whether Fluent Python and Fluent Python missing pages are the same. So let me write maybe here, maybe equal. Hmm. And then we take Fluent Python and Fluent Python missing pages. Let me run this. 
and here you can see that they're not considered to be equal. In the light of the books, since they have the same ISBN number, I would typically think of them as being equal, but here for the Python data classes, they're not equal. I think you're starting to see the system. Two data class instances are considered to be equal if and only if all of the attributes are the same. And in some cases, this is a great tool, and it's definitely a lot better than the usual default that Python implements, namely equality is the same as location and memory. This is not the case unless you make an identical copy. So the important thing is that since data classes are just classes, if something doesn't fit your need, you can change it. So here, the equality, I really wanted them to just compare the ISBN number. I think that's the most intuitive for books, since they should have a unique ISBN number. Then I can overwrite this. So what I'll just do is to go here into my class. I'll write a dunder eq method with self and other. Yeah, of course, I should have a def keyword here. And it's probably best to just check first that if the others class is not the same as the class of the object we're considering. So here I'm missing two underscores. So if this is the case, we should probably raise a not implemented error. Let me just for simplicity return false, saying that they're then not equal. And otherwise I want to check that the ISBN numbers are the same. And now, if I run all my code again, you can see that now it fits more with what I intuitively would think of as representing the data of books. So the moral of the story for equality is that there are some basic features implemented for equality when it comes to data classes, but you can always overwrite them since they're just classes. Finally, I also wanted to talk about as dict and as tuple. So typically in applications that we want to export data classes, we would first convert them into a dictionary and a tuple and then export them. Maybe we want to export the data to a relational database or as JSON files or whatever. In any case, this is a lot easier if you have the information as dictionaries and tuples. So what you then do is to go up to the import statements and then instead of just importing data class here, we can import as dict and also as tuple. Now we can easily convert them to dictionaries. So let's take the Fluent Python book and let me make something called the Fluent Dictionary information. This is just using the as dict function on the Fluent Python book, like this. And for the tuple, let's take the Crash Course book. So let's make Crash Course tuple here. And this is as tuple, take the Python Crash Course book. So here you can see the dictionary, and this is title fluent Python author, and so on, it looks like a perfectly fine dictionary. And here you can see the tuple, and it looks like a perfectly fine tuple. Notice that since the crash course book is missing the number of pages, this is just represented here as none. So since you can easily convert to dictionaries or tuples, that means that you can utilize this structure if you need to. So for instance, say you wanted to iterate over a data class. This is not possible really in the default mode because it doesn't have any iteration features, but you can just convert it to a tuple and then iterate over that. Then you can get the values here and do whatever you want to do with them. Or convert it to a dictionary and iterate over the keys or the values and so on. So I hope you learned something new. In the next video, we're going to talk about how you can add a custom ordering to your data classes, making them even more powerful. If you like the content we're providing here, then leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you again in a future video.